going to land on its own. At any time, the operator can interrupt the flight plan and take over manually as soon as he spots something he wants to take a closer look at. If they want to look at the corner of a building, they can zoom in on that corner. If they want to look at the entire rooftop to see who's there, they can do that. It has the ability to sit wherever you want it to be, stay in that location, and look at one point continuously. A well-trained soldier can get this little eye in the sky, out of his pack, ready to go, and in the air in less than five minutes. This micro air vehicle flies up to 500 feet with a top speed of around 50 miles an hour. But what if you need to go further and faster? Coming up. We've gathered the intel. Now, time to see the incredible firepower that kicks into action. Scout unmanned helicopter extends the range of the soldier on the front line by more than a hundred miles. It's fully armed, it flies autonomously, and it means the future combat systems ground squad has airstrike capability. From Army perspective, uh, they need to control their own assets. When you are in combat, you need it right there and then, and you can't wait to call something in. Flying up to 20,000 feet, it's almost silent, so it's perfect for covert reconnaissance. It can be used to bring vital supplies to the furthest reaches of the battlefield. Fire Scout, like all the larger pieces in the FCS force, acts as a node in the network, carrying most of the processing power and relaying the digital information. It brings the whole package together, because it can provide that ground commander, that eye in the sky, that communications in the sky, so that he can play his chess pieces to bring the game. But there's no question that in the future combat scenario, the master of air cavalry is the mighty Apache attack helicopter. Anybody who knows anything about the military knows that the Apache is a killer bird of prey. And once it's connected to future combat systems, nothing will escape its grasp. Although the Apache has been around since the 1980s, the Army's longbow variant is a completely modernized reworking of the original making it the most lethal multi-mission helicopter in the world. If you're covering a lot of ground very fast, you don't know what's going to be over the next ridge. With future combat systems, that information becomes available so I can get into a position to, to affect the battlefield. And the missions can change en route and the battlefield changes. That information can be sent to the aircraft, and the aircraft then can react to that changing battlefield condition. combat kings of battle the artillery pieces are smart but best of all they're lightweight future weapons favorites like the Enlos cannon have been specifically designed to be more mobile than traditional mortars and howitzers 23 tons might sound like a lot but compared to the heavyweight 70 ton Abrams tank the Enlos cannon is practically a featherweight Enlos LS is even easier to transport. Its rockets are launched from a box that's small enough to go on the back of the truck. But let's not forget the most important component of all in this scenario, the one around which the entire future combat system has been designed. That's the soldier on the ground. FCS is constantly evolving the soldier's capability by integrating the kit he wears. Well, the future combat system provides our soldiers 
uh, unbelievable situational awareness on today's battlefield and the battlefields of the future. Currently, we base every single mission we have off of communications. And now we can spread out, cover more area, and still have communications with everybody. Uh, these soldiers will be able to know where they are, where the enemy is, and where their buddies are. He is plugged into the network via the Future Force Warrior, a complete communications package incorporated into his uniform. Now, when you get all that kind of information at your fingertips, does that make it easier for you to do your job, or is it too much information? Well, no. With uh, part of the software issues they're working on right now is putting placing in filters, so you don't get information overload and you get what you need when you need it. What's the coolest thing about this gear? It's comfortable. I've heard the theory. I've seen the hardware. Now I can't wait to see these elements fused together into the ultimate unified fighting force. Coming up, future combat systems in action. I've been looking at a revolution in military strategy called future combat systems. Now it's time to see some of the pieces working together. FCS will enable a 40-man platoon to become a more efficient fighting force, capable of handling missions no other unit this size could have attempted before. The end goal of future combat systems is to create an all-seeing, all-knowing warrior who's capable of handling any mission on the battlefield. Here at White Sands, under the scrutinizing glare of the military's top brass, these men are about to take part in a full-scale exercise designed to test the system that the U.S. Army has already fully committed to. This hot zone is a cluster of buildings. It's supposed to be sparsely populated, and normally it would take a hundred men or more to secure this area. Today, just a handful of soldiers will do the exact same job. To get an overview of the situation, the first thing to do is to launch the Class 1 UAV. This immediately reveals the scale and layout of the whole area, and these images can be seen by every man in the platoon, the commander, even the White House, if necessary. From the air, the immediate area looks clear, but the men still have to secure it. To make sure their path is safe, the SUG V comes into play to check for booby traps, people hiding out, or any other hidden dangers. If it checks out, this truck will offer a limited amount of cover. It looks okay, and as the platoon moves into position, my role is to take the SUG V inside the buildings. I've got cover right here, I'm safe. But inside that building, I don't know what's in there. And we got to go in there and make sure that place is secure. The beautiful thing now is I have the luxury of time. I'm safe behind cover, and I can clearly see what's happening inside that room without putting myself at risk. I got a wide-angle lens, I've got thermal imagery, and right now, based on that, I can clearly see there's a booby trap wire right there. Navigate it around, no problem. Coming around the back end, if I want to check it out real quick before I go in that area, I just turn the camera's head. I'm on the other side of the threat. Looks like there's a bunch of boxes and garbage on the ground. Give myself a little more elevation and lock myself into position a little bit better. And that is an anti-personnel mine. So if I were to trip that wire coming through that room, I'd have be finished. As it is, the rest of my platoon now knows exactly where the booby trap is in advance. Now I've raised the camera very high. I can clearly see what's on the desk. Looks like maps, things of, that would be of interest as far as intel. And I'm able to search everything and take my time and not risk any of my other guys in doing this. But 
I know that in warfare, you can't.